On today's video, we show you how to trim competition pork butt. Hey, if you love to grill and barbecue, then this is the channel for you. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss a thing. Because today, my boy Corey is going to show you how he trims competition pork butt. You ready for this? I think so. <laughs> are you, you going to show are you, are, you, are you ready? I'm ready. I know the keyboard cooks, so they're going to tell me I'm doing everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, but. Yeah, but we're saving all the scraps. Yeah, we're going to save all the scraps. Maybe make some sausage. I sausage, sausage, yeah. Or, uh, cube it up, make some uh, carnitas at the house, you know, good tortilla. All right, man. So, hey, we're going to jump right into it. But first of all, this video is not sponsored by anybody. Um, we just happen to be using Compart Duroc here at the American Rule. So, that's what we're going to be trimming. But like I said, it's not sponsored by anybody. So, let's just jump right into it. So, for those of you that don't know, this is uh, Koi Mike's from Fat Boy Barbecue, right. Temple, Texas. That's right. Jeez, I can't even talk about how many awards you guys have won. World Championships. Just a few. Just a few, a couple. Yeah, you know, it, it pays to be lucky. You know? <laughs> hey, I'd rather be lucky than good that, any freaking that's right. day. That's the motto. Um, so today we're going to trim up some uh, Compart Duroc. Uh, these are these are full uh, shoulders. You get them in uh, in the mail. They're pretty awesome. You can see the marbling in the color. Uh, these heritage breed ho hogs. They uh, they have great flavor, great marbling. They're going to give you some good flavor uh, pork. So you know when you're at when you're at the uh, biggest stage in barbecue, trying to get up there and hoist that uh, big wooden trophy, um, you don't want to spare any expenses. We'll crack the cry. You got you got four of them here, huh? Four of them, and that's how we roll. Yeah. Uh, go big or go home, right? Go big or go home. So uh, I like to uh, when I crack the cry, just make sure it smells you know okay. You don't want any uh, any sort of funky smell coming off of it. Now and you and you will know. Yeah, it, oh yeah. Bad it's pork funny. is, you know, really it's, quick. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a few knives here. I've actually got this is just a cheap old Victorinox cur uh, six and a half inch or six inch curved boning knife. Um, I've got a shun. Um, oh yeah. You know, and this one this one I beat up on. You can tell, uh, but this is a workhorse. This, this little guy here, you'll see it later what we do with that. That's a Meridian Elite, little eight inch, uh, one of these fillet knives. And then I got a good pair of scissors and a steel. Um, so kind of how I attack this, you, uh, you got the bone right here in the back. You can feel it on two sides. Don't cringe. <laughs> yeah. I like them nice and cold. You can hear that it's just a little bit, um, just starting to get to that thawed portion. It, it just makes it a little bit easier dealing with this. Just come in there and you know, work right there around that bone. Now, uh, kind of the muscle we're focusing on is up here in the front. So when you're working down in, with this knife, be careful not to go too far into that muscle because um, you don't want to run run a good pork butt like this. So just use your hand, kind of get in there till you feel the lip. I think I'm getting real close to it. Kind of scoop yep. it out. Jump on that back side. Yep. And right here, same thing, get in there. Just kind of scoop it out. And sometimes every, all of these little these uh, blade bones are all a little bit different. Um, I don't know if Compart does. I know a lot of companies sell a debone butt already. Nothing wrong with that. I kind of like taking the bone out myself. That way, I know the the knife work. Anyone, if anyone runs it, it's me. That way, I can blame myself. You just get you a nice little handle there. Just be careful. Watch your fingers. You're gonna run that knife right along that bone edge. Just keep working it free. And these bones, you don't have to throw them away. You can uh, save them and make a good, throw them in your pot of beans, make good uh, pork stock with them. I know a guy that uh, saves them and uh, makes a pork stock for his pork injection. Oh, really? Yeah, a little porky flavor. I thought that was a pretty cool little That's thing. That's a good idea. So, uh, now that we got that bone out, it's gonna lay a little bit more 
lower profile. Um, I like to take it down pretty small. The rolling KCBS has got to be over four pounds. So I'm going to take it right to that limit just for consistency. So I'm going to start right here with the money muscle because, like I said, that's the most important muscle that we're going to work on. We're going to come right here across the top of it, just peel some fat off. Let me save that meat for you guys. And you can see they kind of get into it a little bit at the packer. That's no big deal. But there's this fat line right here. There's actually kind of a false money muscle yeah. sitting on top of that money muscle. It, it, that, that one right there is hard to explain to people that uh, this little guy right here is the false money muscle. Yeah, that, that fat line right there runs all the way across there. And it's actually a fat line that runs all the way down. So when you render this properly, when you get it just right, yeah. you just flake right off. And I'll tell you what, you you don't figure that out until you uh, you got them all on the board and you're trying to slice them and you got all these money muscles and you can see it yep. it just continues down. So I just like to get in right there behind it and just kind of travel it down, follow it down, travel that line down, just round it out. And then I'm gonna work on getting this uh, this little butcher mark here out. Yeah, they uh, they got you there, didn't they? Yeah, but that's okay. You know, yeah. It's still, I mean, look at the marbling in this thing. Mm -hmm. you know? That's a beautiful pork butt. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be too upset about this. So how, how many of these things have you trimmed, you think? Uh, pork butts? Man, I wouldn't even venture to guess. I, I probably trimmed them... I probably trimmed them 30 different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, and each time I trim pork, I'm trimming at least, uh, at least four or five at a time. So you're um, and you're going just after the money muscle, correct? Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much the main muscle I'm going to target here. Uh, a lot of guys you'll see they'll take this fat line and they'll go straight down to the fat cap. And they think you know they'll get rub all the way around that money muscle. They get you know flavor, smoke. Man, I don't I don't really buy into that. I like to kind of leave it attached there, let it save some moisture. Yeah. Because um, there's there's going to be so much flavor that we're going to put in this with our uh, Cosmos pork injection, a little bit of rub that. You know, it's going to have all the flavor it needs. Oh, yeah. yeah. So once once we got it like this, I'm going to take this knife, and now I'm just going to pretty up this butt. Um, like I said, it's four pounds. I can't take it below four pounds. So right now I'd say it's still probably seven and a half, eight oh, pounds yeah. at least. Yeah, that's a, that's a big piece of meat. Yeah, so this is a, this is going to be a good piece of meat for sausage right here because, you know, it's a... Uh, I mean, just look at it. You know, all that marbling in there. Again, like a lot of guys, they'll they'll kind of attack some of these other muscle groups and try to get slices out of this this little muscle right here. Um, kind of what I've found with uh, this horn muscle back here, a lot of guys like they like the tubes back in there. To me, the texture is just not there. Yeah. The the money muscle man, the texture is when it's right, it's right, and it stays right. Yep. Yeah. Um, so now I'm just going to kind of level this butt out, and I'm just going to walk my knife, turn my knife, and walk it straight down. So we're getting pretty close on this one. Um, I like to take my edges. You see, I got nice uh, sharp edges. Sharp edges in barbecue are, uh, they're no bueno. So I'm just gonna take my knife here and kind of round out my back, the back edge of this butt right here. And I don't know, man, you see anything else you don't like on this? Hey, man. What do you think? That looks good to me. Good to you? Take my knife and just round this out a little bit. Yeah. So that's that's it. Quick and dirty. Um, you know, I actually have a, a tell-all class online. You can learn more about how I cook these, um, what I do with my Cosmo products, how to make these, uh, how Yo, to make them taste pretty good. Give them the link. So, yeah, so it's it's www.barbecuechampsbbqchamps.com. Um, there's a there's a few guys on there. Um, my page is on there, Corey Mike's. Um, you can buy just the pork class if that's all you're interested in. But it's a, you know, it's it's a pretty cool deal. Get you a kind of an all access uh, tell all barbecue class in in your own living room. Um, I know you you did it on a DVD series. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not a lot of guys have done it, so uh, it's cool to to kind of have that. And then you you reach out to me on a Facebook page, and we'll talk about um, different cooking on different pits and stuff. I know Cos, he's cooking on a, on a jambo like me. He, you know, I don't want to say he's copying me. 
but 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 I'm confident but, he's there. But, but he's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so yeah, we got we got three more to do here. We should see how fast you could trim one though. You want to see how fast? Yeah. Without cutting my hand off. Without cutting your hand off. Fingers okay. I can lose a finger. I got ten of them. Finger. Yeah, you got plenty of fingers. But it is it is funny to. Yeah. Right, guys, you, cool you know, you pick these, uh, you get these butts, and you realize that you're cooking a lot of extra meat that you're not really using. But there's no sense in throwing it away. You can always use it uh, for something later. Yeah. And the thing that I love to do with it is um, I like to take it and smoke it. Yeah. And then just, just get it done, done. Yeah. And then actually I put it back in the fridge right. and then chop it up for tacos. Right yeah. Oh dude, that's dude, it's the best tacos. Yeah. It's they're also I mean there's so much fat and flavor in these that it uh I mean it's really hard to screw one up. Yeah. Even when even when you screw it up, it's but really you, you know I am looking at this butt right here. This is a classic example. I mean how you can see the false money muscle and it just look how big that fat seam is. Yeah. I mean that that's the thing about these hogs is they're they're fatty yeah um you know and you got to be careful because you got you're getting back there into that money muscle and i you know I, i'm losing a little bit of meat going back in there but see there it is it's, it's laying yeah, you it's can laying see it in there. like you can actually i mean and that's it, it's hard to you know it so for those let me see if i can use a knife right yeah here. it's this seam right here that is a false this side is a false yeah. money muscle you're gonna take that Kind of draw a line yeah. in it. Take you. it off for him. Right here. Take it off right here. You just kind of keep working it off there. Yeah. I know some guys that'll leave it on. Doesn't have they don't have any trouble with it. But you know what it is? They're not rendering their fat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here here is the problem if you leave it on. If you do render it and then you go to slice it that little piece will right always just, fall off just like i just sliced it off you go to slice it and it's just going to flake off yep and then you're going to be bare naked pork yep absolutely a team name bare naked pork pork yeah. <laughs> bare naked pork i don't know uh, that might be a little bit better that's a good looking money muscle yeah, right there that's, that's that is a it. real good looking money muscle that might be your money one right there Round out these edges. Now, what temperature do you like to cook at on your jambo? I, I'm a 275 to 300 guy. Um, you know, I, I use a four inch stem, which is what comes with it. So, a lot of people switch over to two and a half inch stem and they'll still run 300 degrees, but 300 degrees on a two and a half inch stem is about 50 degree difference in a four inch stem. Yeah. Which I didn't think it'd be that much difference until I left my four inch stem and ran a two and a half and, you know, realized yeah. I'm cooking a whole lot hotter. Now, and just for everybody that is not sure, Corey lives in Texas. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not from a pork state so, so, by any means. So I, I get a lot of comments from guys that go, hey, real Texas barbecue is low and slow. And, and I'm like, hey, man, just cook however, whatever suits you I, and your pit, I'll you do you, that. I, I'm not going to say that he was the inventor of hot and fast. But my dad, the year that he won this cook-off in 97, cooked to 400 degrees all day. And that was in 97, 400 degrees, had like a first place brisket, like walked in all the categories. I mean, that kind of sold us on hot and fast. You get yeah. more sleep, drink more beer. <laughs> uh, I don't drink though. Yeah, I don't either, I don't either. You don't either? No, no, no I don't drink. Okay. So, Rick does all the drinking for us. Yeah, Rick. Yeah. Come on, Rick. Someone's got to do the drinking. <laughs> so, I'm the guy. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you get to trimming, you see these little these little edges. Yeah. And if something just don't look right, just get rid of it. You also, there's a little blood vessel right here. I'll, I'll work on that here in a second. But, again, I don't really want to dig into that money muscle um, too much. I like to kind of leave it, leave it sitting there just to... There we go. Oh, yeah. look at that. There you go. That money muscle even looks better now, doesn't it? Yeah. That is a chunk. I'm not going to mess with that too much. That is a chunk. That's a chunker right there. I'm going to just smooth it out right here. Man, this fat is like... 
it's it's hard to explain the fat off these compart butts. They're a little different than regular pig yeah. fat. Kind of smooth it out, that way no sharp edges. You're gonna have to screw that one up for Sweet. me. So hey everybody, man, was that not an awesome freaking video? How you can actually trim your competition bork butt. So uh, hey, Corey left his uh, uh, website. The, we'll also put it down in the description. So go over there and, and show my man some love. And as always, man, thank you for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss a thing. And we'll catch you in the next video.